That music you hear is the sound of the lovely and talented DC singer and songwriter Cecily. She's not only guarding her attention here in the DMV, but up and down the East Coast as well. Cecily's here today on The Sound. everyone, I'm Britt Waters and welcome to The Sound. I'm here with the singer, songwriter Cecily, gifted with a sweet soprano voice. This talented DC native has been compared to artists like Denise Williams, Brandy, and Corinne Bailey Ray. That's a lot to live up to. Do you get inspired from other artists too? Oh, always, mm -hmm. yeah. That's all you can do as an artist, is be inspired by other artists. Yeah, yeah. so describe your sound for us. So my sound is definitely R&B. Mm -hmm. um, it's rooted in soul music and has influences of jazz and also folk music sometimes, but it really is R&B. That's all the stuff we love on the sound combined <laughs> together. Let's get right to it, take it away. Thank you. Thank you. Me mm -hmm. 
beautiful. When we come back, we'll talk about Cecily's love for mid-century soul and jazz and about her other love that blossomed into a marriage. Stick around for the sound. Welcome back to The Sound. I'm Britt Waters here with Cecily, who's performed in most of DC's top music venues. Blues Alley, the Kennedy Center, the Hamilton, the Howard Theater. Those are big accomplishments. Congratulations. Thank you, yeah. But what, what's the best venue, which feels Ooh, great? Ooh, you're gonna get me in trouble. No, uh -oh. actually, yeah. I really love the Hamilton. Really? The sound is incredible, mm -hmm. and the room is very large, but somehow still feels intimate, so mm -hmm. I love that. How do you yeah. get people in to like a small circle and, and really intimate um, into your uh, musical, sorry, I messed up. <laughs> good. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> it started over. We'll pick it up on the I was like, wait, what am I saying? <laughs> you know what you're gonna ask? Yes. Okay, Jewish good, stand by, we'll pick it up on the question. And three, two. When you have big venues, how do you make it intimate? Um, I mean, it really doesn't matter the size as much if you bring the energy or the yeah. vibe, you yeah. know? And I think that's what's so special about being able to perform in venues is that you truly do get to set the energy for the evening or for the day mm -hmm. in that space, in that moment, you know? So it's like, if I bring all my vulnerability and all my, you know, intention, and I'm really in that moment, yeah. and people are gonna meet me there. Mm -hmm. That's what I found. And you yeah. seem so connected to your music, and you should be, because you've been doing it for a long time. Vocal training at the Peabody Institute. Has music always yeah. been what you knew you were great at? Well, I mean, I always really enjoyed it, mm -hmm. and I always felt that I was good at it, you yeah. know? Um, but it wasn't until college when I kind of started taking it seriously as a career option and not just as my favorite hobby. So, you know, it was a journey in that regard. And what did you do to kind of take it to the next level from hobby to your occupation? You know, what's funny is <laughs> I just told my mom. My mom is such a doer, yeah. you know, where I'll sit and I'll kind of ruminate over things for a long time. She's like, you wanna do this? Okay, we're doing this. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of it. I just told her, I was like, this is what I wanna do. She started sending me books and articles about the music business, and she's like, you need to read all of this, you need to learn everything, and let's make it happen. So it was really her who kind of pushed me to, you know, take it to another level and take it seriously, if that's what I really wanted. Oh, thank God for mom, because I know. you're definitely meant for this, it seems. Thank you. Thank so you. how does the songwriting process work? You write a lot of love songs. I do write a lot of love songs, yeah. yeah. I mean, the songwriting process is always different. Mm -hmm. um, I usually co-write, meaning I write with another person. So mm -hmm. it's always different depending on who you're writing with. Um, sometimes, like just last week, I had a producer send me a track that was already finished, mm -hmm. you know, and I wrote the melody and the lyrics. And so that's one way to work. And then yeah. sometimes I'll sit down with someone who plays an instrument and I'll already have the melody or mm -hmm. I already have the lyrics and the melody and we'll kind of work it out together. Um, and so sometimes know, it's like, all fresh. We wow. just start something totally new. Yeah. Um, but I think the most important part of the songwriting process for me is that collaborative kind of listening, letting go of your ego. You know, that's the beauty of it all, I think. Is it ever awkward because now they know like everything you're thinking and all the emotions <laughs> that you're putting into the song and maybe who you're writing about? Yeah, I mean it can be a little awkward and that's why, you know, you have to kind of know who you're writing with most of the time or at least mm -hmm. trust them. Yeah. yeah. Now you recently got married. Congratulations. I did. Thank you. How has that affected your career? Uh, you know, I don't think it has affected my career as mm -hmm. much. I mean, my husband is very supportive. He doesn't want me to do anything else. Oh, um, yeah. You know, he's always there for me and, you know, at all my shows and does videos for me sometimes and photographs. So, like, he's so supportive that mm 
Um, and I wouldn't have married someone that wasn't, honestly. Yeah. And now yeah. everyone's like, oh, that's her husband? So that song on, on this <laughs> album was about him? You know what's funny is actually none of the songs I've written about him have been released yet. Really? Yeah. So they're about other people. So, well, you know, you live a long life you long and life. have a it's lot okay. of experience. <laughs> he gets it, right? Yeah, he understands. So if you could have had anyone sing at your wedding, who would you have chose? Like, anyone. Oh, that's so hard. Yeah. Well, you know what's funny is I probably, maybe Stevie Wonder. Okay. You know what's funny? Actually, the drummer who's playing with me today, Dante Pope, he actually sang at my wedding, and he sang a Stevie Wonder song. That, perfect. So I guess if I had to, in any way, you know, make okay. it better, I would have asked Stevie Wonder to do it. <laughs> I don't think he'll be so. offended if you right. choose Stevie Wonder <laughs> over him. Right. Now, you've performed uh, before some really big acts, like Bilal and other things. What's yeah. that like? That's always really exciting because, you know, you know that the people who are there mm -hmm. are lovers of good music. Yes. And so you know that you have an opportunity to get them to love your music too, mm -hmm. you know, if you do it right. So um, I really enjoy that. Just, you know, it's always great to, to be able to meet the artists themselves. Um, but I, li I really like meeting the, the fan bases yeah. because I mean, and if you're a fan of Gregory Porter or Bilal or Kenny Lattimore, that means you really love good music. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm just excited for them well, to know the me. Those are people you want to get into your music. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. Describe your fan base here in the D.C. area because we are lovers of art and culture and music yeah. and there's so many different things that you can go to. Describe how you get those fans to connect and stay connected with you and your music. Yeah, you know what's interesting is that because I'm from here, mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of my parents' friends come to a lot of my oh, shows. Okay. And then my friends come to a lot of my shows. And then, you know, all these people I've met through music and especially, I'm 27 right now, but, mm -hmm. you know, especially doing the music that I do, you meet a lot of the over 30 crowd and mm -hmm. they like my music. So I love, my shows are always so intergenerational, mm -hmm. literally like from 80 down to 20, you know, yeah. and everyone's there enjoying the art. So I really appreciate that about my shows, especially in my hometown, that I can get those people together. And because, you know, especially with gentrification and everything, there's, mm -hmm. there's a lot of a disconnect between the younger population and the older population and the black yeah. population and the white population. So, like, I love that in the space of a music venue or just in the moment of a song that people can all be connected to the energy or emotion of that song. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, maybe it can help to have more conversation or connection after the fact. Yeah, and that's yeah. great to bring the city together through your music. Yeah, 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 definitely. Now, I've seen you around a lot of times, so always on the seed. <laughs> Do people stop you when you're just, like, doing regular things? They're like, oh, are you performing there? Yeah. Is that awkward? Actually, <laughs> and it always catches me off guard because yeah. I feel like, you know, I'm just out here hustling, just an independent artist, you know, mm -hmm. but people do recognize me sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's always funny because whoever I'm with, like if I'm, you know, they'd be like, oh, you big time. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, it's nothing, you know. I'm sure it'll get a lot worse at some point. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to help you make it worse. <laughs> all right, let's get back into the music because that is what this is all about. <laughs> when we return, it's time to turn up the sound once again with Cecily. She's about to bring her special brain of mellow magic to the stage once again. Stick around for the sound. Welcome back to The Sound. Britt Waters here with the lovely and talented DC native singer and songwriter Cecily. Now you performed in front of former first lady Michelle Obama before, right? I did, and I didn't even know she was there until after I was finished. That wow. was kind of cool. <laughs> so wh who would you spot in an audience that might make you a little bit nervous? If anyone could be uh, at your show. I mean, there's so many people that could make me nervous. That's okay. okay. <laughs> there's so many people. I mean, any of my favorite singers, like, I adore Shaka Khan. Like, if Shaka uh -huh. Khan was listening to me, wow. I'd be like, Ugh. Would you, you dare know? to, like, cover one of her songs since she was Not there? in front of her, never, oh. no. <laughs> no, no, not unless she asked me to, like, okay. or somebody asked me to, but yeah. not out of my own volition, no. Okay. <laughs> what do you have next for us? So the next song is a, a song that was on my last project, and it's called Real Love. What's that about? It's about love. It's okay. about, you know, letting go of your ego, letting go of your concerns, putting other people's opinions out of the way, and just focusing on the love you have for that person. 
And that clearly worked for you because now you're <laughs> happily married yes, and yes. blissfully singing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into real love. Thank you. Thank you. much to Cecily and her band and for all of you watching we'll see you again on the next edition of The Sound. Thank you so much. <laughs> that was beautiful. That was beautiful. You did. I knew it.